Hi. So in this video, we're going to try and cover a function called sum product and uh, what it can do for us, in what scenarios it can be useful for us. As the name suggests, the function is a combination of two things, sum and product. So it first does a, a product and then sums up across the arrays that are being uh, used to calculate the product. That's what we're going to try and understand and how to use it and where this is applicable. So first case, let's assume there are five stocks. We have A, B, C, D, E and we have the number of shares of each of these in our portfolio and we have the current market price of each of these in our portfolio. I want to find the total portfolio value. So the brute force approach is I will go and multiply the number of shares with the price to get the value of each of these shares and then I do a sum of this, right? So I can do a sum for this and get the answer as 5,76,176. That's the portfolio total. Now what some product does is it does both of this together. So I can start writing some product, right? And it says array 1, array 2. So I can put array 1 as this. I can put array 2 as this. So now let's understand what it does. It will take corresponding elements in those tables or arrays and multiply. So it will take the first element and multiply with the first element, take the second element, multiply with the second one, third with the third one, fourth with the fourth one and then it will store all those values and then add all of them together to give you the final value. So if I do this, it should multiply 100 with 1919, then 200 with 350, 151 with 112, 2566 with 67, 2323 3 with 54 and ideally should give me the same answer as what I've gotten in the cell above. Right? So we do that and we realize that this is the same as what we calculated above. This is my sum product function. Right? So that's a simple straightforward usage that you have a couple of arrays you're multiplying to find it uh, in terms of the answer. Now <coughs> a lot of the times these problems are not so straightforward. Right? So you could have uh, slightly convoluted questions being asked and you can use the same function to try and arrive at the answer. Right? So what could that answer be? You could, for example, be asked a question that uh, there are two indices, right? let's say Nifty and Bank Nifty and their annual returns are given to you and you are being asked to calculate the number of years in which both the indices have given positive return. Right? You are being asked to calculate the number of number of years, total number of years in which both the indices have given positive returns. Right? So we'll break this into two stages. Let's first say I'll use an if function and say if this is greater than 0, then 1 else 0. So if the index has given a positive return, I see a 1, otherwise I see a 0. I do the same for the second index. So index 1 and index 2, we repeat the task for both of them. In the year they have given a positive return, it will give a 1, otherwise a negative. For example, if I change this to minus 11%, it should change this cell to 0. Now, I can use a sum product here. Remember 1 into 1 should give me 1. 1 into 0 or 0 into 0 uh, at any point of time is going to give me 0. So if I add up all of these, it should give me the number of years that should work, right? Let's do a sum product and check. So some product of this array with the second array of ones and zeros and only when both the corresponding elements are one, which is when both the indices have given a return of greater than zero, that's when the sum will add up and it will keep adding those. Otherwise the, the value will be zero in that cell, right? So I'll do that. There are two years in which both of them are positive, year one and year five. If I turn year two into a plus 10 percent kind of a number, this should change to three years, correct? If I uh, change the first one to a minus 15 percent number, it should again go back to two years. So I can use the sum product function to try and basically solve for this question that has come to me. That's the way you would typically be using. Very simple straightforward requirements may not come a lot of the times. So try and understand how can you use a function and its output in solving a problem in finance that is being given to you. That's what we did here. You can use it on a bunch of functions like, you know, when do two stocks give positive returns or when do two indices give positive returns. Think of trying to use this in terms of solving a problem statement that has been given to you. So that's how you can use the sum product function. That's it in this particular video.